Hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today I want to go over a couple things that might be suppressing the charts both in stocks and on the crypto markets, um, but of course these they are facing slightly different issues. They do overlap, but uh, the crypto market has it, I would say, considerably harder right now. And the, uh, you know, the stock market is just waiting for some type of calm in order to have a significant relief rally. And we've already gotten a fairly good rally. In fact, we're putting in a bull flag formation, which I've been talking about for, I don't know, since the end of last month, okay? So this thing is just, it's just stretching on. And if you just want to trade the range, you know, this has been a pretty good trading range, no matter which market you've been looking at, really. And so, you know, a lot of people are complaining, you know, oh, what's this, you know, pump about? What's, you know, what's that drop about? You know, why is it so chaotic, right? Well, it's not really that chaotic. It's just, uh, you know, the market's indecisive right now. So you just got to carve out a range, trade it the best you can. If it's too choppy for you, then get out. I mean, there's obviously some bullishness in the market, like in uh, the Russell. You know, we had a very bullish day today. There's no way around that. You know, the Russell is giving us a good indication. The Russell was hit the hardest early on. And it's kind of being the most bullish right now. So I don't know how you want to interpret that. But I see it as the market wanting to just go for it. You know, we've been kind of oversold. And, uh, you know, let's go to the daily here. And, uh, you know, we can see that uh, there is this, you know, this desire to just pump us, right? Like, uh, we've, we've been in these low zones for a pretty good while. Let's check out the weekly here. Yeah, so it's been a good while. And uh, we're breaking out of that uh, bearish control zone on the weekly, which we really entered you know, uh, at the entire, you know, last quarter of, uh, you know, of 2021 was kind of a prelude to it. There was that nice spike, but uh, that was kind of the uh, last farewell, right, before we just uh, plunged to hell. I mean, you can see the curve has been pretty consistent down there, right? These kind of lower lows just consistently lower lows, a little bit of an interlude, right? Uh, that last hurrah of the insiders before the uh, interest rates started getting pumped, right? Like they knew it was going to happen. So of course they pumped the markets and then they took a profit on everybody. I mean, this is basically the same pattern in all the markets. You know, we've been just oversold for a long time with a little bit of a uh, scamminess here or there. And the question is, are we going to get another kind of like little scammy fake out or are we going to, you know, pump to heaven? And I think it's just going to be another scammy fake out, to be honest. I think we have a lot more pain in this market. But, uh, you know, how high could a relief rally go? You know, once we break out of this uh, bearish control zone, you know, you can see we could have a actually fairly sized rally. Uh, couldn't do it here, just uh, overall too bearish, but uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps we could give it a, a good try, maybe get up to this uh, middle area or something. Uh, we don't we don't have to just uh, plunge down. And so when you look at the patterns, you know, on the charts, they look like they want to go. And, um, you know. So far, we've just got a lower high, basically, and uh, lower lows. So the trend is to the downside, but uh, there's some interest. There's some interest. Let's take a look at the uh, MACD, just to get a look at that uh, weekly on stocks. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a nice big corrective phase on stocks. Obviously, this is the Russell. And, you know, once again, there's a chance to potentially go for it. Uh, does, is this necessarily the bottom? I don't know. Pro probably not. But, uh, you know, again, could we get a nice rally? Maybe. This one fizzled out. Look at that. Just like one, 
one little pathetic dot there, right? Potentially, we could just get another little dot or just getting rejected and going straight into some red zone again. But uh, I don't know. I think that if uh, the European Union is pretty moderate, then getting on board with fighting inflation isn't necessarily bad news. The market will respond well to some decisiveness. I think the indecision, not knowing if it's going to be 50 basis points or 75 basis points, I think that kind of thing hurts more than them actually implementing the policy, right? Uh, because the market's going to build in the higher expectation. And so, you know, they need to know the answer. And then you can potentially get some bullishness if the market had overreacted, right? But, uh, you know, just uh, on the U.S. side, of course, we're waiting for the Fed just to uh, make sure that they are raising at 50 basis points and not 75 basis points. The hawks were kind of spooking us last week, kind of just making us kind of like hold steady. Right. And uh, not really sure if they were going to be very serious about inflation and, you know, continue to slap us down which is kind of what they promised. Or if they're just going to be weak for a couple months to give the uh, billionaires and the insiders a chance to, you know, basically have a nice run, dump on some guys' heads in retail, and then uh, once again disappear as the trend continues down, as the... Uh, Recession becomes clearer and clearer, perhaps. You know, who doesn't want to rally before that, right? So, uh, you know, yeah, we're just waiting for Europe, for the CPI data in the United States, and then also for the U.S. decision on the 15th. And not much more to say. We could get a nice, we could get a nice rally up, up maybe a level or two. If everything goes smoothly, the bull flags can pan out. Maybe get these areas up here, which are kind of hanging out on all these charts. Or maybe even just catch people by surprise and just have a uh, mega rally, right? We can just have a mega rally. Maybe not break this high or anything, but we could have some kind of a stretch goal. Or just kind of uh, go to this trend, right? So we have the measured move to the trend line almost exactly, and it just hasn't changed. Nothing interesting happening here. Just waiting for the information to come out. And if it's bad news, then we'll probably just dump to these levels, like I suggested. Uh, for stocks, I mean, that's really it. Uh, sorry to be uh, repeating myself so often, but uh, it's really just that. The uh, dollar is looking a little toppy again, so was this a lower high? Maybe. Maybe. If the dollar comes back down to support, then we could see that bull flag start to play out, just like we had that bull flag while we were dumping here. All right. Stocks may have another pump if the dollar continues to come down. And that's probably why you should consider the European decision to be so important right now. Because, of course, the euro is part of that basket that the dollar is compared to when establishing this index. And then we have the VIX, which does look like it's just going to uh, hold the market for a little bit. All right, just getting a little bit of a green on the chart there, which means volatility is going up, which means trading isn't that easy. It is at this kind of support area, if you can call this support, but we've bounced in this area before. 
So are we breaking below it? And maybe we continue down. That would be great for stocks, especially in combination with the dollar decreasing. You see, while the volatility was decreasing and the dollar was decreasing, that's when stocks really went for it, right? That's why I bundle these two together. We had this decrease in the dollar and we had this decrease in volatility. Combination of those things had stocks pumping, right? And of course, I know that this volatility is just for the S&P, but uh, it's a good stand-in for all of them. I don't need to look at every volatility you know, measurement. Even Bitcoin has its own volatility measurements, and there's two or three ways to look at it. But uh, this gives you a pretty good idea. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump over to Bitcoin, see what's going on over there. You can see that same kind of holding pattern. Uh, this isn't a trading channel or anything. I was just looking at, uh, just kind of imagining where we might be in this process. I'm not really sure. This is just imagination. There was some type of consolidation below the previous supports, right? That's what this is. And so I was just looking at this chart when we had consolidation first below those previous supports, yeah, there's a little wick, but you know the majority of the candle was up here, right? And so where did that fall to? And then is there anything that could give me any type of an indication of what's going on? Well, we also had this uh, low here and this low here. And they kind of carve out a little wedge where that consolidation occurs. And what do we see when we broke out of that wedge up here? We ended up having a nice run basically to this line, a little bit beyond it, but basically to this line, which would represent something like this support area, or we should call it a resistance area really. And, uh, you know, this kind of peak over here, or see this right here, and this right here. And then we basically bounced off it here, bounced off of it here, kind of, you know, ranged around it on it before dropping, ranged around it and on it before dropping, finding support on that diagonal. And then we popped back up to it, got rejected from it, and then continued the move. So I'm just hypothesizing that we could potentially see a crazy run, assuming everything goes okay. And then maybe this market isn't done. We have another pop down. Who knows how low? No idea how low. But it could be, you know, one of those areas that we've talked about before. And then perhaps we go on our way, right? And by the way, this is an assumption that everyone makes that it's going to be like this, but uh, it doesn't have to be like that. Okay, it could be uh, could be more depressing, it could be flatter, right? Like all of this is just statistical, so you know it could be something like this and just like this. You know, you don't know, you don't know, right? Just be open-minded to any kind of possibility where, you know, even to the possibility that we could dip lower than you, th than you think and that we do something different than we did over here, All right? Don't just be superstitious that because we did something once that it has to happen again. I'm just making concepts just to think about how these things behave because I'm also looking at, for example, EMAs. And we have these, uh, you know, this kind of uh, crossover right here where the, uh, I believe on this one, it's the 300. Yeah, where the 300 is getting on top of the 200. 
And that happened right in this area. So where did that actually occur? It actually occurred right at the bottom. And so, well, right before the bottom, I think. Let's double check. And these things don't have to line up, by the way. Okay, no, it wasn't the bottom. It was before the bottom. But on that curve down. All right? Kind of like on a ledge here. So we're seeing something different than what we did before. You can tell the top is totally different. And the bottom could be completely different as well. But for general timing, you can see that we're, you know, we're somewhere in this area or we're in this area. And everything has to go really, 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 really well for us to consider that we're in this area. Because there's a good possibility that we are just in this area, relatively speaking, right? There's that uh, crossover, right? Just like this one. And perhaps we plateau, plateau for a bit. Maybe not even that long, to be honest, because we've already got these crossings. And maybe we just dip down. And then we have our bottom, right? Just could look totally different than this one. Doesn't have to look exactly the same. But what are some things that could be suppressing the crypto market right now? Well, we've got uh, Congress looking at a uh, crypto regulation bill. That's pretty intense. It looks pretty biased against DeFi. Looks fairly favorable to Bitcoin. Could be somewhat biased against the layer ones and you know most of uh, the rest of the crypto market other than Bitcoin. But perhaps it's a good start. And uh, I think some of these uh, Bitcoin maximalists had an influence on writing that legis legislation because it does seem skewed to one side and uh, yeah there's gonna be a lot of amendments there's gonna be changes it's not gonna happen overnight this isn't gonna be passed immediately it's gonna be part of the process of all these regulations that are gonna be popping up all around the world and uh, you know Luna is part of that right the chaos that happened because of Luna, the aftermath of it, you know, the amount of money that just like disappeared or transferred hands, and all the shadiness in the market, all the kind of criminal behavior. This stuff really needs to get uh, grappled with if this, uh, if this community, if this asset class is going to grow. Because people are just going to get freaked out and they are going to leave the market. They are going to leave the market unless something brings confidence in. And I'm talking about institutions and real adoption, right? Where business is actually using this stuff and endorsing it and being proud to talk about it with their company's names, right? That's how you, that's how you create household brands. You can't just... You know, you just can't be so complex that people can't even figure out their receipts. You know, if uh, your mom and dad can't figure it out, if your grandparents can't figure it out, then it's not ready for retail. It's not ready for mainstream. And the uh, community just won't grow. It could actually shrink. Right? And the uh, scammers just get more and more sophisticated. And the insiders just get more and more sophisticated. And eventually you just have these classes which start to feel very traditional. 
in terms of how people are taken advantage of, especially in DeFi, right? Especially in these different projects that can just dump on you. You have no, you know, you have nothing to fall back on. You have no help. There's no insurance. There's no, you know, there's nothing. Again, like half the time, you can't even figure out your own receipts. So look, the U.S. is looking at crypto bills right now. And I'll probably go through that in another episode. But uh, just want to see what the commentary is from the community first. My perspective, it's just looks highly biased to Bitcoin and looks, hi looks highly biased against DeFi. And so there's some improvements that could be made. And I don't think it gives enough consideration to other layer ones and layer zeros and things like that. So uh, it's probably it's probably better than having nothing, but at the same time, you don't want something that's that's not good, you know. That's not it's not going to help the community thrive. You don't want something that's going to hold it back. And so a lot of guys are saying, well, we should just accept it as it is because, you know, it's good enough. But uh, I don't think so. I think there are improvements that need to be made. And so uh, probably good to have some awareness about that. I know the uh, Bitcoin maximalists are really enthusiastic about it, but uh, not everyone shares their perspective, right? Just like not everyone shares Richard Hart's perspective on uh, Hex. That guy's getting weird these days. Every day he's like posting new uh, images of different $10,000 outfits that he's buying. And I don't know what's going on, but uh, the guy is getting weird, man. I mean, he's always been a little bit weird. You don't want to be too judgmental, you know. A lot of us in uh, technology industries are kind of on the spectrum or neurodivergent, these kind of things. That's all fine. That's all that all contributes to the creativity and also the skill sets that go into technology. But uh, you know, you can't have these like just wacky CEOs and just weirdos. You know, who just have no empathy for the people that they're working with and for basically the customers. And, you know, Richard Hart and uh, Do Kwan, I mean, they just strike me as a, just a couple of freaking weirdos, right? I mean, Elon Musk is downright a sensitive man compared to those, you know, clowns. So, uh, you know, and, and he's pretty insensitive. So, uh, hey, you know, hopefully I'm not being too woke about that. But, uh, you know, do you want this industry to uh, improve or not? You know, like we got to get rid of the clowns. I mean, maybe not get rid of them, but, uh, you know, at least ask them to be decent human beings, you know, or at least sound like them. And so Bitcoin's facing regulation. So what do you think? It's just going to pump while all of that, uh, you know, while all that politics is going on? That's a very tall order, you know, to ask for. And, uh, you know, we've also got, uh, you know, we've just... We've just got this stuff going on in the uh, crypto market where it's so risky to be in this industry that uh, people are just fleeing the market. But we are consolidating around these EMAs, which is a good sign. It's not necessarily terrible. I mean, you can see like up here, 
where we just put in a, a local high, right? And then we dump down. We could potentially see that type of a dump happening again. I told you I had marked out this pattern up here and I had seen it right here. And it played out almost exactly. Is this, is this any surprise? I told you for two weeks I had hunted down that signal. We had it, and then this almost played out exactly. Had debates with people about how bullish we should be. I wasn't bullish, just open-minded to pumps, that's all. And we neither pumped to where I wanted to pump, and we neither dumped to where I thought we should dump. So, like, this has been a very moderate, kind of timid, just kind of holding pattern while the market waits to see what's going to happen with interest rates. And Bitcoin's been a little bit weak because, of course, there's that crypto legislation and stuff like that. But uh, I think this stuff is going to come to a resolution within the next uh, week and a half. Actually, the next week, right? In a week and one day, we should have our understanding of what Europe, the United States, also China, China's inflation data, and also the, uh, the U.S. inflation data. All the interest rates and all the inflation data should be out there. And maybe we'll have the chance to uh, pump or dump. But we're kind of in the middle of this range. Right? Just <laughs> dead in the middle. If this is our range. We're just literally in the middle. Like... You can't give anyone any advice based upon that, right? Just, just get filler episodes. So, yeah, I mean, this has been a nice range. I mean, of course, the mid-ranges as well. You just buy at support. And take profit on each of these levels. Right, Kind of have these levels marked out here. And that's been working pretty well, you know? Buy in the lower half, sell in the upper half, you know, as soon as you contact those things. And if you're in the middle, just consider doing nothing, you know? You don't have to trade every, you know, every spot on the chart, every move. But I see a lot of people like buying in these areas, and I just just makes me wonder what they're thinking. Because we have a chance to buy down here, here, here. We'll probably have another chance to buy down here eventually. I mean, if we don't just pop through this. But if we do pop through it, you know, that's another chance to buy. Because what you're going to want to do is clear this range, right? Well, clear your uh, local high, that kind of 32,000 level. So let's see, maybe we're going to have a little run like this. You know, we've already kind of had the... Uh, at least on the indicators, the equivalent of this formation, that kind of very serious drop, right? And then this kind of arc, this one arced up, this one arced down, but on, for the indicators, it was almost identical. And then we had kind of a scary drop here. We had kind of a dip right here that scared a lot of people, just liquidating, you know, just liquidating some of these positions before pumping, pumping couple setbacks, kind of holding pattern, waiting for the Fed and waiting for the Russian war, waiting for all this stuff to be figured out. And then kind of had a run, 
decided it's not worth it. Probably do the same thing. Probably have a run. Decide it's not worth it. Either here, here, or maybe here again. And maybe just dump, right? And explore the bottom, these lower levels again. If we do break out above like uh, 40k, then it could be a substantial run. It could be a pretty nice run. And if we just can't get above 32,000, then, you know, maybe we can explore our next uh, DCA areas, perhaps uh, 26,000-ish, 25 to 26,000, or uh, perhaps 22 to 23,000. Not much to talk about today. Um, we did see some kind of crazy run on, uh, what was it, UNFI? UNFI. Let's see where it is. <laughs> so this chart was just insane. So you have the range. It, it did the full range. Now here's its its origin. It came all the way up here to its all-time high. It just was a falling knife forever. Tagged its bottom. And then, you know, it had some news. There's, there's some investment. The uh, Dow or whatever voted to... Uh, have a major investment and uh, it ran back up to its all-time high and then came crashing halfway down so 3,000 percent from this bottom and just today or yesterday rather I think we can count that but here start here you know, 1,200%, 1,200%, right? And then how much did it drop? All the way down, 80% down. <laughs> it's probably going to continue to go down. Might be a good project, but it's still junk, and this market is still bad. Like, this spike was basically designed for dumping on people's heads most likely but you see it's beginning right this kind of like spike up and then this run down it's got that kind of zillica vibe where the dev team had events and really came out and marketed it hard and then it just kept dumping on everyone Like my friend Retta says, these coins ain't loyal, right? There's Zillica. It's like UNFI just decided to pull a Zillica. I mean, I don't even, like, maybe I should be paying attention to this type of formation because, you know, this is like the, the fake out formation or something. But you see how Zillica came all the way back down. Like, literally, oh, it tagged my zone. I didn't buy there, but it tagged my zone. And you can pretty much expect, I mean, I would expect anyway, for it to come back down into this area, if not lower, eventually. Yeah, that looks like a lower high, right? Looks like it's going to dump over again. And that's why you don't chase pumps, right? Guys who bought in here thinking it's just going to the moon. You know, they, they lost like 80%. 
it's crazy how that works, right? Like some people can make like 3,000 or, you know, at least 1,200%. And then other people, they just lose like 80%. And this is the 30 minute chart, all right, 30 minutes. So this happened in like the space of an hour, right? Oh, that has to hurt. That has to hurt. If you just, if you just went to get lunch, if you bought into this project because it was just pumping and you just went to get lunch, like, by the time you got back you just lost 70% of all of your money right so uh, TA matters <laughs> and uh, not chasing the pump matters now these guys have been waiting since March 2021 Anyone who held up here, they've been waiting for for over a year for this moment. Can you imagine the guys who sold right here, like when we were when we were like falling off the cliff, when all of crypto was just falling off a cliff? Can you imagine the guys that sold there? Oh. You know, they bought up here and then they held it through this whole thing, like uh, come on, UNFI. And they sold here or here, and then it just feel bad for them. But uh, this industry is really screwy, right? Like, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't happen if there is profit and loss statements. This shouldn't happen if we really understand the fundamentals of a project, and it's based on some value that can be quantified. This is just FOMO and gambling and probably some Ponzi aspect to it. And then probably fraud. I mean, I would speculate that somebody pumped this to get it going. And then they dumped it at the top. You know, I mean, intentionally. Because... You know, this, I mean, it's hard to say because this is such a probably low volume asset, but you can just imagine, right? You can just imagine. It doesn't take that much to get it going. And then you know it's going to be a chain reaction because everyone's desperate for something good to happen in the market. And so people just FOMO on Twitter. And if you have a marketing campaign, where everyone is just like piling in or all your bots or everything on Twitter and everywhere. Like they're just like unify, unify, unify. Well, you can just dump on everyone's head, right? This thing's almost 50% down, you know, from its pump. But that's 70% down in terms of whoever bought up here, whoever got dumped on. Who's buying up here, right? Except for ignorant people. I, and I don't mean that in any mean way. I just like new new people to crypto. People who don't understand like how this market works, perhaps. <sighs> you know, I mean, that happens in every market, but this is just... It's not like stocks where you can you know, really evaluate a company, even in the middle of FOMO, even in the middle of, you know, money printing and just kind of like, you know, the, most stocks probably shouldn't have been at their, even at their current valuations, they probably should have been lower this entire time. But, um, at least you can understand the relative position of one company to another in terms of its revenue and just everything, right? You can just, you can just put it all together. But, you know, these, this, like, this stuff is like scammy, right? I mean, as good as, as good as the news was, was it really, 
you know, in, in the middle of a economic downturn when all alts are just dying, was it really worth its all-time high? I can understand it was worth, you know, taking it up to these levels. Like maybe, you know, it's not garbage and it should stay alive and it should have a higher low than, you know, maybe the previous summer even, right? Like maybe it should have had a higher low than here, right? And so maybe this area is probably reasonable. But this is just a scandal. <laughs> you know, this is just... It's just insanity. So you look at these charts. Oh, hey. Yeah, we pretty much hit my target here. I mean, a little bit later than what I thought. For uh, C pool, sixty two per cent. Just kind of looking at the pattern that it made. Not really important. But yeah, the markets, uh, you know, the markets want a pump. You know, they're far away from their 200 EMAs, you know, on the daily. And that's uh, it's very tempting for any chart to uh, try to, you know, pump a bit. It's just everything is so dead. This is a good sign. Interesting. Hmm. But the strength of the move is going down quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to fizzle out or what, but Yeah, it's kind of dropping as we speak.
I don't know, maybe Gala gives it another go. Maybe something like this. Not sure about this, but maybe something like this. Well, let's see. That's KDA. Ooh, that looks weaker than Gala. Okay. Hmm. I don't like the arcs on these uh, MACDs that I keep seeing. It's just, it's like they're bending over. Sort of like this. You know, usually you want to see a swooping up pattern, right? Like this. This is like, <laughs> it's about to jump off of a cliff. I mean, everything else is getting ready for a setup, but uh, I mean, obviously, ADX looks awful. Kind of toppy. This is kind of an ugly cross if this happens on uh, KDA. If the 300 crosses above the uh, 200, that's, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, you see what happened with Bitcoin, right? Right there. Ooh. Yeah, the 20 and the 200 are almost crossing on the four day. I think uh, Crypto Crew was mentioning there was going to be some type of uh, four-day cross coming up. Was this the one he was talking about? I'm not big on the four-day. But, uh, you know, if we look back here, the 20 and the 200, I mean, that was a pretty nice dump. That was the last dump, actually, of 2018. So if that is a uh, foreshadowing of a big old dump, then uh, maybe we're about to have that. Is there a three-day equivalent? Uh... Yeah, the 50 and the 200. 
the 50 and the 200 on the three day pretty similar Fifty and the two hundred. Yeah, I mean we could see that. Something like this. So there could perhaps be some type of uh, not good crossing over here, kind of a deathly crossing. But here, we're getting that uh, negative signal on the three day, this 20 and the 200. So I would even suggest that uh, this could end up being bad news. Three day, right? Wait, did I read that wrong? Just a four day? Uh, where was that? Ah, oh, right there. Yep, right there. So 3-Day has the uh, 50 and the 200, which is kind of mid-drop. And then the uh, 20, wait, wait, 40? And then the 4-Day has the uh, 20 and the 200. And it's essentially the same point, but uh, a little bit prior. So because it's four days, we can't line it up exactly. It jumps too far, but uh, it is slightly ahead. So let's look at the four day. And the four day, yep, has that uh, 20 and the 200. Okay, yeah, I, I got it. And then the, th the three day has the uh, 50 and the 200. And then within this area, there was a huge fall, all right? There was a huge fall. In 2000, 
18. Well, something like a 25% move to the downside. which could take us to that $22,000 area if it's if it's a similar move. Uh, the reason we might have a similar move is just, uh, I mean, if we go to the daily, uh, Eric Crown Crypto points out that uh, if this thing is pointed down, probably should look at the, uh, yep, looking at the uh, CME chart. If this thing is pointed down, which it is right now, pointed down, and the stoke is pointed down, and then if the uh, volatility is on the floor, you know, this typically describes uh, the potential for, you know, up to approximately, let's say, 20% move. And so again, that 20% uh, move could take you to that uh, 24 to $22,000 area, assuming that it breaks to the downside. Now there is some conflict in the uh, Stokes over here. The uh, daily is pointed down on the CME, but on the 24 hour exchanges, it's pointed up. So. Again, we're just in the middle of this range, kind of sorting our way through it. And uh, not too much to say about that. Not too much to say. We, it's very indecis indecisive right now. But in 2018, we also had our EMAs way overhead. And, uh, you know, we didn't put in a pump here. We just dropped down, right? Am I looking at the right thing? Where'd my uh, where'd my lines go? Was I on this chart?
Okay, I was over here on the index. All right. Yeah, so, you know, we were kind of in this area. Let's just go to the daily here. In 2018, we were in this area where we were kind of consolidating. We had a very similar pattern to what we're seeing right now. Let's turn this off. Let's go to the 12 hour. Man, I wish these uh, charts wouldn't reset every time you like turn to a new, a new time frame. I wish it just uh, kept directly centered on whatever uh, you were centered on previously. Yeah, that scroll so often. Yeah, there was kind of this ledge that was put in here. I mean, there was one up here, and we didn't pump. There was one right here, and we didn't pump. And there was one right here, and we did get a pump. But it wasn't the final downturn. And what we marked out, you know, what I've just gone through, you know, the reason why I was so quiet is because I was trying to figure out, like, if we have, at least based on EMAs, the, you know, the same signal pattern, which would suggest that if we topped out, would this bring us to our next low? Like, and it might take a while, might take a couple weeks, but would it bring us to our next low? And in 2018, that ended up being our final low. So could this be the last drive down? Like if we are getting these signals, could it be the last drive down? I'm curious, What I wonder what stocks were doing in, uh, let's say uh, the first week of December. Let's get the NAS 100. Uh, ugh. Ugh. that looks ugly. <laughs> that looks pretty ugly. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Look at this. We have, oh my gosh, we have like the exact same pattern that we've been printing. Let me get rid of these EMAs. We've, we basically have the exact same pattern that we've been printing. Where we have this uh, bull flag, right? And yeah, we got the pump. And yeah, it was an, an incredible pump. It almost took us to this high, the prior high. After getting toppy and then a couple of downturns. And then we got this like double pop up and then we came down and we just kept breaking down. And that's when Bitcoin put it in its bottom. And then if we compare that, I mean, let, let me just, let me take a fractal of this actually. Do, do, do. All right. If we compare that to what we've been doing in this cycle, obviously, you know, well, it could be different. I was going to say, it, obviously, it's harder, but uh, in fact, we don't know if it was uh, hit harder or not because I didn't measure the uh, proportion. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that fractal. So it's this pattern they got put in in 2018, which then ended up resulting 
in the uh, the end of thing, the end, the bottom of the market, right? This ended up being the bottom of the market. So, is this the turnaround? Like, uh, I don't know. You know, it would suggest it's already the bottom of the market. But the thing is, the Bitcoin kept falling during this area. So is this, am I not stretching this out right? I mean, it doesn't have to fit, but... Uh, ooh, maybe something like that. Yeah, that that makes more sense. I mean, it's not perfect or anything. But that matches the peaks better. Like one peak, two peak. Here's your low. There's, a, I mean, your lower high. Kind of a double top. And then this was a run up. Yeah, something like that. So you can't just shoehorn every pattern onto every part of the market, but uh, sure would be interesting if this is repeating. So again, like uh, we got that kind of we got that kind of bull flag pattern, which ended up bringing us up almost to this one, and that would suggest, I mean, very weakly, it would suggest. I don't know. I'll split the difference here somewhere like that. Yeah. So kind of like this, kind of like what I uh, what I marked out here. Possibly this type of a run, right? Just kind of a nice run. Just a nice run, and then a dump. Oh, I haven't even been looking at this dashed area for a long time, but uh, that's weird. That's kind of creepy that it breaks down to that area that I have marked out here, because it shouldn't just, you know, it shouldn't just align so nicely, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh... Let's just pretend that this has some type of logic to it, and it might not. But let's just pretend that it does. Oh, look at this peak, just right to that, right to that trend line. That's crazy. It lines up right with the measured move that I had of the bull flag. Okay, it lines up to the bottom of this dashed line. It lines up to the top of this trend line. And then it basically captures the bottom every move, and so if we did come down here, like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get freaked out. Like if we bottom right here, and then have a bounce, I'm gonna get freaked out. You know, like uh, I'm gonna sell everything if we do that, <laughs> because uh, yeah, I mean this fractal just looks pretty uh, convincing to be honest. And uh, I I don't know if this will work out or not, but uh, if it does. Wow, that would be something, right? And it would signify the bottom of the market sometime around, you know, uh, October, early October, maybe November. Why do I keep saying November instead of September?
So, actually, uh, August. I don't know why I'm getting my... Uh, in the last video, I said uh, November instead of September a couple times. And then now I'm saying October instead of uh, August. It's pretty late over here. But uh, it's cool that uh, the process of uh, thinking that we went through today, that it ended up resulting in this fractal. Because that's probably not something that I would have noticed without going through all of these just musings, just thinking out loud. And uh, if this ends up having some grain of truth to it, then you know I'll be that much more prepared. All right. Obviously, you can see this pattern right up here. It's kind of counter. You know, it's it's. It's like the same, but opposite. Like as much as this dips down, this dipped up. And as much as this, you know, this was dipping up, this was dipping down. So it's very interesting. You know, it's, it's like there is some symmetry here. It's not just, you can't just dismiss it that easily. And then this chop, it eventually re reached the same position, but then everything else you know, this was a little bit higher, but uh, everything else pretty similar. In fact, even the uh, bull flag was in this area. Hmm. All right, guys. Uh, this was more of just me thinking about out loud this uh, episode, but. Uh, that was our alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.